Ministry of Fair Housing. In the wake of the Great Depression and the stock market crash of 1929, President Franklin D. Roosevelt passed the New Deal. Part of the New Deal was the National Housing Act of 1934, which introduced ideas like the 30-year mortgage and low fixed interest rates. Its purpose was to make housing more available to lower income families. For this program, the Homeowners Loan Corporation was asked to create residential security maps, which is where the term redlining comes from. These maps were used to represent the security of loans and labeled entire groups high risk because of their race or national origin. This meant if you were African American, for example, you were automatically high risk and not allowed access. The underwriting manual of the Federal Housing Administration also stated that incompatible racial groups should not be permitted to live in the same communities, and that highways were a good way to separate neighborhoods. This history of discrimination has had long-term negative effects. Redlining map example. Green indicated desirable for lending like upper-class businessmen in affluent suburbs. Blue indicated still desirable for lending like white-collar families. Yellow indicated declining areas, like working-class families. Red indicated the most risky or hazardous for lending support, which included lower-class citizens, immigrants, and African-Americans. Lock City Exhibit. Residential segregation is the underpinning to many social inequities and left many areas underdeveloped or in disrepair. This is how housing discrimination impacts school quality, access to retail businesses and groceries, and environmental health issues like where factories that cause pollution have been built. Most middle class families gain generational wealth from the equity they have in their homes. Until the Fair Housing Act was passed in 1968, landlords could legally refuse to rent, sell, or lend to African Americans and other people of color. Homeowners and real estate agents could refuse to show or sell them homes. Communities could pass zoning and land use restrictions designed to keep people of color out, and owners could add restrictive covenants like whites only to deeds. Banks could also deny mortgage loans based on a homebuyer's race, or appraise homes at a lower value because of the homeowner's race. Steering is the practice in which real estate brokers guide prospective homebuyers towards or away from certain neighborhoods based on a protected characteristic. Blockbusting is the practice of persuading owners to sell property cheaply because of the fear of people of another race or class moving into the neighborhood and reselling it at a large profit. You may be asking yourself, what does the FHA cover? The general answer is most housing with a few exceptions. Boop. The FHA covers government-assisted housing, apartments, mobile homes for sale or rent, mortgage companies, banks, advertising for housing, and insurance for housing. Exceptions include owner-occupied buildings with no more than four units, single-family houses sold or rented by the owner without the use of an agent, and housing operated by religious organizations and private clubs that limit occupancy to members.